Hello there and welcome to my computer. Today I'm playing around with this tessellation pattern or what do you call it. It's basically a pattern repeat over over. It comes from a quest in the Facebook group, the Fusion for City users, where a person questioned about posted this picture and asked if somebody could do this pattern as you see here. And so I imported it as a canvas in Fusion just to basically re-engineer the pattern. So I have created a sketch here to have a look at it. So if you look at this pattern, uh, it's four size spun run. We are going to call this a small point of vertex. So it's 90 degrees all this. So they are four size spun round. So I have done the square. So it, it needs to be a square pattern if you're going to turn it around 90 degrees. And looking at this, I first did a stupid thing they were different patterns but I decided they are the same so we do only do one of these patterns then spin it around we tell you rectangular pattern of stuff we're gonna look at that but if we take a look at this we have a shadow we have a highlight we have a shadow so there needs to be two valleys in this low peak high peak low peak or whatever you call it in the other direction I first assumed it was one valley the whole Y a whole Thing, but I have changed my mind so I'm doing it the same way so there's also a small valley here so I get this this shape of these edges like paper cresting so I imported the canvas as I said and I have calibrated so it's well, it's a bit skewed offline this image so it's not really perfect but I made a sketch here let's open it and just to get some dimensions I have scaled the canvas so that each square is 15 millimeters you can change for the variables you want to and then I played around until I found something that I like so the arc I'm doing here we're going to have a diameter of 80 millimeters and the center is going to be six millimeters off from the bottom of the square here so yeah that's what we're going to start working with so we're going to start a new sketch or new design we're going to start a sketch at the bottom plane and we're going to start with a square starting from the I'm starting from the center point over here because I'm going to use this point to spin around when I do the four four different patterns this is going to be 50 by 50 and then I'm going to do from midpoint straight down and from midpoint straight down this is just geometry to help me mirror things and stuff so all of this is going to be construction geometry and now we're going to start with one of the sides we're going to do the one down here as I have here we're going to do this thing here so we're going to start with the line down here go up hold down the button so we can create the arc and then a line down to here and we're going to make these two tangent and we might start with dimension this here arc and now this comes with the radius I'm going to right click and choose diameter and I want it to be let's put it down here 18 and of course it's jumped all down so we're going to move this thing up like this now it can move all over the place so we're going to constrain not that we're going to constrain the center point of the arc to the mid midline here and we're going to dimension from center point of arc to the bottom of the square and we said that's going to be six millimeters and by doing that we put it out of the way a bit like that we have a fully constrained sketch let's pick up the sketches here so I say finish sketch no sorry I, I'd have to do other size of course too I was no I was too speedy uh, now I need this thing to move around here so I will do a circular pattern choose the circular pattern with the not infilled circles because that is for what do you do thank you once more circular pattern like that thank you and now I can choose the sketch lines I'm going to choose this point here say we need four of those but we're not going to use all four so I'm going to uncheck these two here and by doing that I got that one and now we're going to do a mirror. We're going to mirror this across this mirror line and say OK. And we're going to do a mirror of this 
lines here and use the center line I did here as a help. And now we're done our first profile. By doing everything with mirrors and stuff like I can now change the body to to 5mm or 7. You can play around with this dimension if you want a different look of your pattern and over diameter or anything you want to change. But now we can finish the sketch. Go back to our home view. So now we have done the edge we need. Now we're going to do uh, interior rails, which are going to lose later. So we are going to do a sketch. We're going to start on this plane here. This plane here goes straight between these two points. We're going to use that one. Use that plane. We are going to do intersect, I think we can use. I want that point that point and also like to use the center point just for fun makes it a bit easier to see where I am now I can turn off the first sketch and we are going to do a arc we can do a center point arc do it from here and of course we're going to use coincident with that one over to there and we're going to dimension this and it's just the radius and I have chosen to do them 80 millimeters and dimension jumped out a bit, but that's a problem. So you can play around with this dimension too if you want to, but I have chosen to do an 80 millimeter arc for the interior rails. Finish sketch. Turn off the first one again. That's the first one. We're going to do the same over here. So we're going to do a construction plane. This plane, distance to object, and we can pick anything at this line. Like that. Do a new sketch, of course, on this plane. And this is this one. We're just going to do projections of the curl we did earlier. And we have done the sketch. That's this one. Now we're going to need one more. We're going to do a sketch in the middle here. Construction plane. From this and two objects. We're going to do that point. That's the center. And we're going to create a sketch on uh, that plane. We're going to turn off these two. So they confuse me. And once again, use intersect to find where we are. This arc, this arc, and just for fun, the center line. I like to have a center line sometimes so I know what I'm looking at. Turn off the first sketch. We're once again going to do a center point arc. What did I just do? Sorry. Back in that one. Arc. I happened to finish it. Sorry. Center point arc. Now we are correct. From there to there. We can dimension it. Once again, 80 millimeter. Sorry to do things wrong sometimes. That's just me. And finish sketch. Turn on all our sketches. We can see what we have done. Now we have done three interior rails in this direction. And I want an interior rail in this direction. Which helped me give me a smooth, smooth surface. We are going to do an offset plane, this plane, and we're going to lock it into the center point or a center for the, the shape here. Create a sketch on this one. Once again, intersect. We're going to pick the arc out here. This interior rail. See if we can find this interior rail. Whoops. This interior rail and that arc. Front view. Do not finish sketch now, Christian. Good. I sometimes make mistakes. I'm now going to turn off all the other sketches so you can see what I'm doing. And uh, we're going to do a center point arc. I'm just going to start up here and go like this. Now I'm going to do some constraints. Constraints. I want to make sure that this, this point here and the center of this arc are like that. And I make a coincident between this and that. Once again, center point arc. Center point up here. Start from this point. Go out. Make sure we have a coincident between this and this point. And then a horizontal constraint between this arc and that point. Now we're going to do, as you can see, it turns black, the lines here, but we're still not fully constrained. So we're going to do one more arc, 
Now we're going to do a three point arc from maybe this means the start point, the end point, and then we're going to put in the third point like that. And still it's not perfect, so we're going to do tangent between this and this, and between that and that. And by that we have a fully constrained sketch. Constrained sketch. Sorry, I can't talk today, it's Sunday. And like that. So now we have done all the sketches. I hope I haven't confused you too much. Now we're going to do the patchwork. I'm going to hit surface and hit patch. Now do not choose this profile here. It would be an easy one, like bam, like that, but no, it won't work. You have to choose the edges. So first of all, click the edges like that. It looks the same, but it behaves a bit different. Now I choose here interior rails or points. We're going to choose this interior rail to the one we made in the middle and the one over here. And then click OK and turn off all our sketches. It's a bit hard to see if you don't turn it around now. Well, it looks, it looks a bit like a double spoon, we want to call it. And now we're going to start doing the fun thing with spinning things around and making fusion crash. We start with a circular pattern. We make sure we have pattern type of bodies, I prefer that. And the axle, as I made a sentence earlier, I put the origin point in this corner just to help me now do the spinning around four. And by that we have made our base matrix. I'm going to stitch these together. I like to stitch things together as I work. And now we need to pop out these to a bigger pattern. We are you doing it using a rectangular pattern. Once again, pattern type, we're going to choose bodies. And direction, I'm going to choose the two axes of a region here, like that. And we're going to change distance type to spacing. And I'm going to make four. And the distance is going to be that the first square I made was 50 millimeters, and because we have two here, it's times two. And the other direction, I'm going to say four, and the same here, 50 times two. And OK. And by doing that, we have created this beautiful pattern. And now to make things a bit better, we are going to stitch everything together. This is where Fusion sometimes take a short break and start thinking about his lives and disappears and hopefully comes back. Are you still there? Come on, Fusion. He doesn't like this. There it is. So be prepared when you do it if you don't have a, I don't have a really good computer, but it, this is quite hard for it. So we're going to hit OK and wait for it. And we're going to turn this into solid, but for God's sake, do not try to thicken this thing. It will crash your computer most probably, because there are two strange, many strange things here going on. So now we have a, a surface model here, so I want to put it on something solid. So we are going to go to solid, create a new sketch, and create another flat plan here. Just to be easy, I'm just going to use circle, put it somewhere I want it. I want it maybe here, like this. You can do whatever you want. We're going to finish sketch, and turn on the sketches again, extrude this shape. I will do it. Here you can do whatever you want. I do it symmetrical. I'm going to do it 20 millimeters just to get it pop through, uh, like that. Turn off a sketch a bit easier to see. Now we're done that. Now we're going to do modify, uh, split body, body to split. This one split in two is our little body here, and hit OK and wait for fusion to think. This also takes a while. Yeah, we need the need nice green down here. Thank you. And now I'm going to look for bodies. This body I will cut away. You can do it any way you want. You can cut this pattern positive or negative. But this here, I'm going to right click and choose remove. Do not choose delete. That's wrong. Because it, when you lose connection to it, remove. And I do not need my surface money or remove. And by that, I now have this pattern on a little 
Nice shelf here. The problem is it's quite hard to see the pattern and I have a preferred method to see things sometimes. I'm gonna choose to put on uh, appearance and carbon fiber plane is the one I prefer. Uh, let's see, we can scale it down a bit like that. That is uh, it's not really looking that good here, but it gives me a possibility to turn around things and see the shape. As you can see here now, we have uh, let's do a corner here. We have a low spot, high spot, low spot, and the same in this direction. And it's so shiny and nice. So that's was how I did this tessellation pattern. And of course, you want to get this uh, shadow thing, you have to put a light source quite low and from the size you get the shadows to be really nice and long like I've done here but this is how I did it I hope it's useful for some of you and have a good Sunday and take care of yourself